right, let's go over uh, this first one. So, what number should be in front of the X? A one. A one should be in front of the X. Uh, and if we want that number to be a fraction, what do we do? Put it over one. We were at like also if you she said if you like fall up there and just check. Okay, take a seat and figure what's out. Um so how do I start graphing this? We go up three. Go down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. All right. So if you did not do that one correctly, go ahead and fix it. So anytime we don't have a number in front of the variable, we can always put a one there. Anytime it's not a fraction, we can just put it over a one to make it a fraction. Okay. Uh, the other one's in the wrong format. We want it to be y equals mx plus b so that we can graph it. And so what's the first thing we have to do? Subtract the 3x over to the other side. Okay. So when we subtract the 3x over, what is left behind? The negative 2y is left behind. Okay. So we have negative 2y, and then between the 10 and the negative 3x, which one of those should I write first? Negative 3x, okay, and then what should I write? Plus 10. How do we know it's a plus 10 and not a minus 10? It's positive. I can see over here there's not a negative in front of it, so I know it's a positive 10, okay? Uh, now, how do I get it so that the y is all by itself? Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. So y equals 3 halves. How do we know it's 3 halves and that there's no more negatives? We got two negatives and a negative over a negative. Those are going to cancel. So 3 halves x, there's our slope. And we have a positive 10 divided by a negative 2, negative 5. Okay, so where do we start? We're going to start at negative 5. And where do we go from there? Up 3 to the right 2, up 3 to the right 2, up 3 to the right 2. Okay, so if you didn't get any part of that one, go ahead and fix your work on that. And make sure your name is written on your warm up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pass them this way. So if you're over here, you're going to pass it down the row, pass it across the aisle. If you're over here, you're going to pass it this way. I'm going to collect them all. All right, um, so one thing I did want to uh, talk about with you guys because I did some grading yesterday. I didn't do enough grading to get stuff put in the grade book, um, but I did some grading and I noticed something 
um, that was consistent between um, you guys in first period. <clears throat> and so I wanna make sure I talk about it before it happens a lot. So it was on one assignment in particular that I graded so far. So uh, my version of the assignment is bigger than yours um, because I printed it smaller on yours, but this, does everyone recognize this? You guys did this last week? Okay, so this is what mine looks like. You can see I circled my answer. I've got some work shown. <clears throat> circled my answer, got some work shown. Circled my answer, got some work shown. Circled my answer, got some work shown. Um, some of you guys might already be figuring out what the issue is with your papers. Um, and then over here for this one, the second part of the assignment, I didn't feel like there was much space for me to show my work. So I did do this and write my answer down for the punchline part. Well, not punchline, but the word. Um, but then I did all my work um, on another sheet of paper. We'll give it a second and pull back up. It looked like this. Um, and what happens when I was grading the papers um, is probably two thirds of the people who turned these in had absolutely no work shown, none. Um, now, you guys have not graduated high school yet. Makes sense, you're in a high school math class. I have graduated high school and I've done probably 10 years of math at the college level. So if I have to show my work to do these problems, do you think that I'm going to expect if you didn't show your work that you actually did the problems? No, I'm not going to give you credit if you turn in an assignment that has no work shown, because that just tells me that you're good at photo math, <laughs> which at this point I know everybody is because we all went through the pandemic. Okay, so uh, in this class, if something is turned in and there's no work shown, I'm just going to write on it. Where's your work? I'm going to give you a zero and then I'm going to give it back to you. That's how it's going to work every single time. Because if I have 10 years of math in college level classes and I have to show more work than you, then we have some sort of discrepancy there because you should not be more mathematically sound than I am as your teacher. Does that make sense? If you can do your math easier than me, we've got problems. Um, so if Desmos is how I'm teaching you to do the problem, that's fine. But if you're using Desmos to cheat the math so you don't have to do it, then that's a problem as well. Okay, so, um, and that's, that's kind of a good point too, is that the purpose of the math is not just, oh, I got the answer and I can turn it in, because um, the answer is often not the point of the problem. A lot of times the point of the problem is that you put the effort in and that you actually know how to solve it. So if the purpose of this is to solve an equation, then I wanna see that you can solve an equation. So what this told me when I saw that a lot of students didn't do the work was that this assignment was too hard. That's what that told me. But I didn't get that because none of the students told me this assignment is too hard, we need more help. It was just everybody turned in an assignment that had no work on it and that's what told me, okay? Um, I'm, I'm given a free pass because you guys hadn't, we had, you hadn't seen me last week, you, you didn't know that you could talk to me about that, whatever. Um, but from this point forward, we don't turn in assignments without work because that's considered cheating. Does that make sense? And if I see that, that's just a zero. I don't give you credit for that, I just give you a zero. Um, the other piece of that is if I see an assignment um, and I can look at that assignment and say, that looks like photo math did that assignment, I will not give you credit. I will, however, give you a chance to prove yourself. So if I've taught you one method and I can recognize that the method used on the worksheet is not what I taught, it is what photo math does, then I will let you come in and you can show me, yep, this is how I do this problem. I had a tutor or something, they showed me how to do this and, and photo math and I just happen to coincidentally do it the same way. If you can show me that you know how to do it, I'll give you credit for the assignment. But if I look at that and I recognize it as photo math and you come in and you cannot show me your work, then you get a zero because using photo math on an assignment is cheating. Does that make sense? Okay, so when I grade assignments, I'm grading for effort. That's what I'm grading for. So it's, did they do the assignment? Did they put effort in? Does the assignment look like they took what I taught into consideration and tried it? 
So you can't just write mathematical gibberish and get credit because you wrote mathematical gibberish on the paper. It has to make sense. You have to have used your brain. Uh, using photo math is not using your brain. So that's the evidence that I have to see. I just wanted to make that really clear before we do a bunch of homework assignments because I don't want you to get graded down on a bunch of things and be confused about why, okay? So that's something that I look out for when I grade is do, does it look like this student has used photo math? And then once I can tell that you are a student who uses photo math, then I'm just gonna be checking your assignments all the time. And you will feel singled out because I will be singling you out because I know that you are a student who does it. So don't get on my radar because then I'm just gonna be looking at you. Does that make sense? And that's not unfair, that's just how it works. When a teacher knows that a student cheats, then that teacher watches that student to see if they're gonna keep cheating. So, um, so just don't, don't get yourself on that radar. So um, looking at these assignments and grading them told me that this was probably too difficult and that as far as solving equations went, I needed to backtrack a little bit. Um, and when I looked at, if, if I had been here last week, then we probably would be having a quiz today, but I wasn't here last week, so we are not having a quiz today. Um, but what I want to do is make sure we are really comfortable with all the solving equations stuff, because that's the stuff that would be on a quiz. So the plan is, let's make sure we're comfortable with solving equations so that we could take a quiz and do well on it and like show our work and we wouldn't have to um, like use an app to solve the problems. Sound good? Do that? Okay. Yes. No. You can't come late to class and then ask to go to the bathroom. That is how it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pass out um, the problems that we're going to do for today. Um, and so the goal for today is just going to be to make sure that if we were to have a quiz on these, we would be comfortable. Um, because that's the next thing that's coming. It's not coming today, we're not going to put it today, but um, my goal for you guys at this point is to say, okay, could we take a quiz on this? Um, have we gotten unrushed the unsolved equations? If we had a hard time with it in years past, are we figuring out what we didn't understand before? And then if we take a quiz on it, can we start off with a little bit? All right. Just the assignment. Yeah. All right. Um, so today we're going to do uh, equations that require you to do one step and then equations that require you to do two steps. Um, so the one step equations are all geometry problems. Um, and they're not meant to trick you. I'm not trying to be difficult with these. So if you look at the picture, and in the picture, the two sides look like they're the same length, it's because they are, okay? So since this is not a geometry class, I'm not trying to teach you anything you've never seen before. I just thought the problems were interesting and maybe not as boring as a normal math worksheet. So if we look at number one, it says that this picture is a kite. And they tell you that AB and AD, so you can see AB is this side right here, AD is this side right here. It says that they're both the same, they're equal, and they're both three inches. So in geometry, we mark that like this. We show that two things are the same measurement by marking it like that. And it says that to do this worksheet, you're going to set up an equation. So since these two sides are the same length, we know that those two sides are equal to each other. 
And so that's what I'm going to write. I'm going to write that they're equal. I'm going to say 3 equals p minus 4. And then I'm going to go ahead and solve for p. So if I want to get the p alone, how do I get rid of the negative 4? I'm going to add 4 to the other side. So do the opposite of minus 4 and just add 4. So P equals seven. I'm gonna have you show your work because some of these what I noticed is that students who were doing it in their head on some of them, they were finding the, the common wrong answer instead of the right answer because they were just doing it quickly in their head. Does that make sense? So some of them, um, it really would be like that where you could be like, oh, the answer seven, it would feel obvious. And then some of them, they would think they were getting it right, but they were actually getting it wrong. So um, it's not going to be time wise. It's not going to be like, oh, if I did it in my head, I'd get this done in three minutes. And if I didn't do it in my head, I did take 45. It's like if you did it in your head versus didn't do it in your head, it'd be a difference of like 10 minutes. So it's not gonna be a waste of time. Um, all right, these other two sides are also the same length. They tell you that in the description, they say that CD and CB are equal in length, um, that they are eight inches for both of them. So 2Q equals eight inches. So what do we do to solve that equation? We're going to divide by 2. So 2 multiplied by Q to undo, multiply, we divide. And then 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay, we're going to look at number four next. They have a semicircle, which is just half of a circle. Um, and they have this part that goes all the way across. That's the diameter. And they give you this half of the diameter and this half of the diameter. Does anyone remember what that word is for half of the diameter? It starts with an R. Radius. Yeah, it's the radius of the circle. So this is the radius of the circle, and this is the radius of the circle. So they are equal measurements. So if those two measurements are equal to each other, what is the equation we're going to solve? Yep, P plus 11 equals 17. So there's nothing on this assignment that is trying to trick you. They are exactly what they look like they are. Um, and if this is the equation we're doing, then how should we solve it? Subtract the 11. So it says plus 11. So we're going to subtract 11. And so P equals 6. Okay. All right. Go ahead and flip the page. All right, I want you guys to find a problem on this page, five, six, seven, or eight. What problem looks intimidating? Six? Okay, let's look at number six. So <clears throat> for number six, based on the picture, is there anything that you can tell is obviously the same? Angle OT and OV. Yeah, these two definitely look to be the same. And it says it in these, oh yeah, yeah, it says it in the description. Okay, OT and OV are the same. So what uh, equation can I set up since I know that those two are the same length? G minus 8 equals 14. Okay. 
And then what am I going to do to solve for G? Add eight. Okay. So 14 and eight is 20, how much is it? 22. 22. Okay, so G is 22. Um, and then here they say, find the length of SU. Um, and SU is this entire piece all the way down the middle. And if you look at that piece down the middle, you can kind of tell that these are not equal in length. You've got like a shorter piece and a longer piece. So we're not solving an equation this time. Uh, this time we're taking the answer that we just had and we're gonna plug it in somewhere. So if we use the 22 that we just had, how could we find the length of the whole thing? Okay, so 22 minus 1 is 21. 21 for the long piece, 9 for the short piece, 30. So the whole thing is 30. A 30, a third, well, no, that'd be pretty large. I'd be impressed if I saw that, yeah. Is there another one on the page you guys feel intimidated by? Number eight? Yeah, what's intimidating about eight? The fraction? Okay, so what, what can we see from number eight just by looking at the picture? We can see that they're equal, right? Um, and there's a geometry word in here, and that word is bisect, diagonals. Actually, that's one vocabulary word. The other vocabulary word in here is bisect. So diagonals are lines that go from corner to corner. So here's a diagonal, there's a diagonal, and then bisect just means that they cut each other in half. So if they bisect each other, they cut each other perfectly in half. So uh, K to M is cut in half perfectly by N to L, and N to L is also cut in half perfectly. And then because it's a rectangle, all of these little halves are actually all the same. So we know just by looking at the picture, we can tell that 20 looks like it's the same length as the 5 over 6y. And this one's a little tricky because a lot of us are not very comfortable with fractions. So anyone have any ideas on what we should do to solve this one? There's a few different ways you can do it. Yeah, so if you had, if this was a nice decimal, we could change this into a decimal. And then you wouldn't multiply the decimal by 20. You would divide it, right? So 5 over 6 is being multiplied by the y currently. So we would have to divide that number over, right? So one option is we could divide over the fraction. That's one option. OK. Uh, and then a lot of students are not very comfortable with dividing uh, fractions. So that's usually not the favorite option, but that would do it. Uh, another option is typically what is most comfortable for students is multiplying by the reciprocal. Does anyone remember what a reciprocal is? It's not a decimal, it's a fraction. It's the flipped version of the fraction. So if the fraction is 5 over 6, it would be the 6 over 5. So you would multiply by 6 over 5, and the reason that would work is because it would cancel out the sixes, it would cancel out the fives. So if we did five over six times six over five, you cancel out the sixes, cancel out the fives, and you would get one y. And one y is the same thing as just 
y. So multiplying by the reciprocal is something that a lot of people do to get rid of fractions because it's easier than dividing by a fraction. So if we multiply by 6 over 5 on the right side, we have to multiply by 6 over 5 on the left side. And we don't all have calculators out and we shouldn't have our phones out. So we're going to have to multiply this by remembering how multiplying fractions works. So I put 20 over 1. That's a whole number 20. I put it over 1. When you multiply fractions, you multiply the tops and you multiply the bottoms. So if you multiply the tops, you're going to have 6 times 20, 120. And then if you multiply the bottoms, you're going to have 5 times 1, which is 5. So now we just have to do 120 divided by 5. We just have to see how many 5s there are in 120. Not 60. So there's 12 tens. How many fives would there be? There'd be 24. Mm -hmm. So why is 24? Yep. Okay. Now we just, there's another fraction problem on here, but it's easier than this one. We just did the hard fraction problem. Okay. So I'm going to let you guys work. We're going to work on one through 10 for right now. All of the problems, um, whatever it looks like on the page, if two things look like they're equal on the page, they are. It's not tricking you. If they look like they're equal in length, they are equal in length. Um, and what I want to see for each problem is some sort of work like this. I want to see some sort of equation, and then I want to see the one step you took to solve that equation. Okay? So every, every problem has one at least one equation to solve uh, to do the problem. All right, so number two, we have an equilateral triangle, so all the sides are the same. So we know that one half u equals 22. So how did we solve this one? How do you get rid of the one half? So times 2 over 1. What's that called? The reciprocal. So we're multiplying by the reciprocal. Uh, those cancel. And then when you multiply 22 times 2, what do you get? 44. 44. So u is 44. Okay? All right. Is there another one we need to look at? Not right this second. Hey, Julia, wait until we're, because we're about to start something else. All right, which one should we look at? Nine, okay. So this one was a little bit tricky from the pictures. So um, these two were the ones that were the same. And then these two were actually different. Okay. So for the first two, we have to set up an equation. So what should the equation be? So 9t equals 18. Okay, and then what do we do from there? Divide by 9. And so t equals 2. Okay, sorry, the screen. Okay, so t equals 2, and then the little length that we're trying to find is from O to S, which is this right here. And they didn't give us any measurements there, but they did give us this, which is the same length. So 15 plus t, if t is 2, 15 plus t is 17. And so if this length is 17, then this length also should be 17. So that's how we did that one. Okay. All right. Are we good on 1 through 10? Yes? Okay. So now we're going to switch to the very back page. 
Uh, for this page, there's not enough room to write our work, so we're going to need a separate sheet of paper. So go ahead and get out a sheet of notebook paper to do your work on for this last page. Uh, you could borrow from somebody. You could say, hey, can I have notebook paper? Does somebody have extra notebook paper that they could share? Um, hang on at the very end. Remind me one more time because I've got it right here. I just want to go through these things. <laughs> All right. So uh, each of these problems require two steps to be able to solve them. Um, and all the instructions are a little bit different. So we're just going to go through a couple of them and make sure you guys are comfortable with the instructions. And then I'll let you guys work for the remainder of the period. So for number one, um, they give you four different answer choices. And they say one of those answer choices does not have an answer of A equals negative one. So we're going to have to solve these and see which one does not have that answer. All right. So we've got some work to show. Let's go ahead and do part A and see if it has that answer or if it has a different answer. So for part A, it says 9A equals 3A minus 6. And our goal is to get the variable to one side. So we have the variable is right here on the left side and it's over here on the right side. So that means you have two options. You can subtract the nine over to the three or you can subtract the three over to the nine. What would you guys rather do? Okay, subtract the three. Let's go ahead and do that. So on the right side, all we have is negative 6. And then what do we have on the left side? 6a, OK. And if we have 6 and a written right next to each other, what does that mean? It means they, they've been multiplied. So we're going to divide. Divide by 6. And so a equals negative one uh the instructions asked us to find the problem that doesn't have negative one as an answer and so it is not a okay let's try b negative five plus a equals six a If this A is written all by itself, what number is in front of it? A 1. Okay, so I'm going to stick a 1 there. All right, we want all the variables together. So do you guys want to take the 1 and move it over to the 6? Or do you want to take the 6 and move it over to the 1? Move the 1. Okay, how do I move a positive 1A? Subtract minus 1A minus 1A. Okay. So we've got negative 5 equals what? 5a. Okay. And what should I do? Divide by 5. a equals negative 1. Okay. So the answer is not B, because we're looking for answers that are not negative 1. C. 
B says uh, A minus five equals four A. What should I put in front of the A? A one, okay. Do you wanna move the one over to the four or do you wanna move the four over to the one? Move the one over to the four. So how do we move the one over to the four? Subtract, okay. So minus one A minus one A, okay. And then 4a minus 1a is 3a. Negative 5 over 3. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can always leave it as a fraction. So what do we do next? Divide by 3. Yep, and we're going to leave it as a fraction uh, because fractions are easier than decimals usually because you can just leave them. You don't have to figure out what they are. So A equals negative 5 thirds, which is not negative 1, and we were looking for the answer that was not negative 1. So C is not negative 1. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, for number two, the instructions are totally different. So for number two, they give you two equations to solve. One you're solving for x, the other you're solving for y. And then when you're done solving for those, then you take your answer for x and y and you add them together. And then that's how you find the multiple choice answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and try number two. So the first equation says negative 6x plus 12 equals 0. Negative 6x plus 12 equals 0. And our goal is to have the variable on one side and the numbers on the other side. So right now, everything is on the same side, which students do all the time on accident. And so how could we make it so our variables on one side and our numbers are on the other side? We could subtract the 12 over. Okay. So negative 6x equals negative 12. Okay. And then what should we do? Divide by negative six. X equals positive two, okay. Uh, we're not done because they want us to solve another equation before we choose our answer. So the second equation says four Y plus five equals nine. They want us to solve that. So go ahead and take a moment and solve this one for y. So our first goal is going to be to get y alone on the left side. Got to move to 5.
Anyone want to say what they think Y is? One? Mm -hmm. Now, two is not the answer and one is not the answer. What do the instructions say to do? Add them together. So what's the answer? Three. The answer is three. Two plus one. X plus Y is the answer. Okay, I want you guys to take a moment and look at the rest of the instructions on the page and just see if there's any instructions that you would feel intimidated by if you had to do the problem without help. So look at problems three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Look at all those problems. Are there any that you're going to feel intimidated by if you don't have help? Pointing to the earbud in your ear. Okay. Are are you guys running into any where the instructions are a little bit intimidating? If you're not sure what the instructions might be asking. Yeah. Say it again. Three. Any other problems? Seven. Seven. Any other ones that might be intimidating? Eight. Okay. Uh, so let's look at number three. We'll make sure this one's okay. And then the other two are very similar to this one. So we'll start with three first. So number three says if M equals three, um, then take the equation 2m equals 4 minus n, and they want you to figure out what n equals. So they're making it look like the equation has two things to solve for, but it doesn't. So m equals 3, and then you're going to take this equation, you're going to figure out what n equals. So if m equals 3, then what does this actually equal on the end here? We got 2m. We're multiplying them. So 2 times 3 is 6. So this is 2 times 3. So we have 6 equals 4 minus n. That's the problem that we're actually solving. So they're just asking you to plug in a number before you get started. Okay, uh, we're going to leave the variable alone on the right side, and we have a positive 4 that we want to move. How do I move positive 4? I'm going to subtract it. Okay, so I've got a negative n, and what do I have on the left side? 2, okay. Uh, what number goes in front of the n? A 1, okay. And so now what should I do? Divide by, I mean, divide by negative 1 to get the n all alone. And so n equals negative 2. Okay, so seven is very similar to number three. It says 12u plus 3v equals zero. And they told you that u is one. And they want you to find out what v is. So if u is one, how do you start off the problem? Yeah, so seven was one of the questions somebody asked about. 
So if u is one, how do we start off the problem? Yeah, 12 times one. Mm -hmm. So then our next goal, right, is to have the variable stay on this side or to get the variable on one side and get the number on the other side. So we are saying, let's take the 12 and move it over to the side with the zero. That would be a great next step. Yep, that would definitely work. So from there, we've dealt with all the parts of the problems that are confusing. Now it's just a normal equation to solve. Now, number eight is confusing because there's a typo. So it says uh, there's a problem with Z, there's a problem with Y, and then it says what is XY. Um, it should say what is ZY. So number eight is very similar to number two. Number eight is very similar to number two. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and work on these for the rest of the period. If you have questions on these, feel free to ask, or if you need um, a copy of an assignment or something, you can come up and grab it. Do you want to bring up your paper for me to look at? Yeah. So what did you do first? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You got negative s equals negative two because it says negative x. Um, hang on. Why do you have your headphones in today? There was nothing even on the floor, so it's not even like a Because yesterday we tried to take our phone to the bathroom, which I already talked about wasn't allowed. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, I'm noticing things and it's not winning you over. So, we're not going to have any issues moving forward. Okay. Yes, go. Yes, hang on. Let me write this pass and then I'll pick it up for you. Alright, so I've been, I've been doing my work. I've been doing my work. Right? But what do you mean for number eight? And I also need help with number four. So, what, do you, what does it mean by what was the value of Z? So, solve this one, get an answer. Okay. So, solve this one, get an answer. Okay. 
and then this, since they're written right next to each other, it means multiply. So get the two answers multiplied together. So get the answer Z Y there. Okay. So this one is very similar to number one. So on number one, we checked this, it had an answer of negative one. We checked this, it had an answer of negative one. We checked that it didn't have an answer of negative one, and that's how we knew. This one says, find the one that has an actual answer of negative one. So you solve this one, it does not have the answer of negative one. So it's not the right one. It has a fraction. You're going to do this one, it does not have an answer of negative one. Answer. So you're just going to keep going through and solving each problem until you run into the one that has the answer. All right. Okay. Thank you. 